Steven, what a difference a beautiful day out really makes. Touche. Doesn't it's very it, nice. Doesn't it make me lo- look happier? <laughs> I feel like we're both just happy today in general. Look, like you go outside, it's 54 degrees. I went to the gym. I came back. I opened the windows. Well, and it's nice because there's just like soft, diffused light coming in too from the windows in your apartment. So, you know, you, we don't have as harsh of a shadow like we did like last week. Exactly. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and welcome to Raw Talk episode 74 and we held it up one day for uh, multiple reasons. One day. Oh, that is that someday? Modest Yahoo song? Someday, I think, it's right? Someday? I don't know. It could no, be. it's one day. Is it one day? Yeah. I don't know. You know more than me. <laughs> I should have had him come in and sing. That would have been good. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> um, we held it one day because we were filming, finishing up filming all week for mm-hmm. Raw, uh, for the Fronos Photo Guide to DSLR Video. So literally shot Monday through Friday, 12 hours for most of the days. Uh, So we didn't have a chance to do Raw Talk. Also, there's a product announcement, and that is uh, we're going to discuss that in detail now before we get into anything else. Sounds Sound good? good? Nikon D4S is officially announced and ready to go. It's going to hit shelves on March 6th for $64.99. That's right, sixty four ninety nine. So let's talk about the specs before I tell you if I'm going to buy it or not. Uh, I need to get out the right spec sheet. Here's the spec sheet. Right here for anybody looking at home, there's lots of specs on here to talk about. It has a 16.2 megapixel CMOS sensor, and it's not the same one that's in the D4. It is a brand new developed, brand newly developed 16.2 megapixel sensor. Okay. Right? Develop a sounds new good. sensor. Sounds good to me. I, I mean, I don't know the, the details behind it or the Well, the details behind, behind it. it is now get, it has better low light capability again. Yeah. So now it does natively 100 ISO to 25,600 natively with an H4. Now, it will expand to H4, 409,600 oh ISO. Oh, my God. So basically, That's it's, insane. it's like seeing in the dark. Is that, that, is that the highest ISO that any DSLR has gone? I you, I Nikon. don't know. I think, well, yes, that's got to be one of the highest that I've seen in a DSLR. 409,600. Man. Previously, it was like 200. It was just half that. Cut that in half, and that's what you had. I just want to know, does, would anyone actually ever shoot at that? Unless uh, it's to the, the point government, where you just need it. Yeah. The government does. And private, private investigators, investigators or something, yeah. Uh, so now it's a speed four processor. That's going to be faster processing for your JPEGs, for your videos, for uh, getting stuff to your stuff, uh, whatever. Faster processor. There's a new RAW mode. They've officially caught up with Canon. Now they're offering a RAW size S. Finally. Which is a smaller J, a smaller RAW file that's 12-bit uncompressed opposed to the 14-bit uncompressed that you use. Gotcha. It's officially half the size of a regular RAW file. So if you need RAW files but, but you want a smaller file size for whatever reason, say, I guess, school portraits or something, if people still used to, do, if they did those in JPEG, well, now you can do them in small RAWs. So instead of being 35 megabytes a piece, they're going to be like 16 or 17. So much smaller. I don't see a need personally for me to use that. I want to shoot with the highest quality possible. Not going to get into the whole, well, if you need to save room on your memory cards, because memory cards are cheap. Mm-hmm. Speaking of memory cards, it is 1CF and 1XQD. Interesting. So <laughs> so it's officially the same as what's... Oh, they did say one other thing. Uh, I'll just say that before I forget about that. It did say in the press release that it, they changed and moved some buttons a certain places to make it feel ergonomically better. I know a bunch of people complained going from the D3S to the D4 that the shutter button was in a slight different place and that felt made them feel like they weren't able to shoot properly. So some s- slight changes there. Uh, so back to the one card. 1CF, 1XQD... I won't yell at it anymore for now. We'll hopefully in the future switch to either the new CFast cards in the future or XQD. Now, I just ordered two of each. I ordered two new CF cards and two new XQD cards. I ordered 32 gigs of both because it does the two slots. I want that redundancy. And we saw when you plugged into my D4, when we put a 32 gig in there, it's 1,000 pictures. That's a lot of raw files to get. But so 32 compact flash, 90 megabyte a second transfer with the Extreme Pro from SanDisk gives me, uh, they were 89 bucks. Nice. And then the the XQD cards unbelievably have come down in price and are still extremely fast. $99 for the 32 gig, 125 megabyte second transfer speed. That's great. So they're only 99 bucks. Bought two of each. Then I have two 16 
CFs and two 16s of the uh, XQD. So I'm, I'm ready to go for video and photos. Speaking of video, while I have that on the line, you can now record video to a, an Atomos and to a compact flash card or XQD card at the same time. Before, That's it was great. either one or the other. So now you can have a backup. One can go to the Atomos and one can go to the card. That's an awesome thing to have. Yeah, like the D800, we have to take the card out to record to the Atomos. Yep. 11 frames a second in full, uh, full, with full autofocus. They added something new, which is called Group Area AF. Basically, they're saying it's for better focus tracking. You know my issues with the D4 and oh, yeah. missing focus, how it would slip when I'm shooting a concert and would shoot, I would be focused right on the guitar player and for some reason the amp was in focus. Made no sense. Well, they added something which is similar, I would think, to what Canon has because Canon's functionality on the 1DX for how you can fine-tune your focus tracking is incredible. So detailed and specific. So they're adding this thing called uh, blah, 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 Group Area AF, which I think is similar to what they had in the D3 and D3S. They got rid of it. That was the diamond pattern. Yeah. Diamonds are forever. <laughs> I never use it personally. I mean, I have it on mine, but I usually use single AF for the most part. I used uh, Unless I'm I, I, tracking or something. I use dynamic AF <laughs> on my D4, yeah. and I'll probably use group AF more often because it takes four or five of the points and makes sure, makes sure that it stays tight to what you're looking for. Uh so it locks on better for AF. I just it, don't want it to lock onto like the nose, say, versus the eyes, or, or right, which I don't think you have shoot, to worry about as much. Well, yeah, if I'm shooting at a real shallow, you know, aperture or something. All right, so they also have a new picture control style that says it gives you better skin color. Maybe that is part of the new sensor, like Canon skin color, like sc <laughs> Canon skin color, less mirror blackout. So they got that down. So there's less bounce going on. So the mirror blackout is when you take the picture. Smooth exposure uh, smoothing. Sorry. Exposure smoothing is something that they added. So if you're doing the long exposures, not long exposures, if you're doing time lapse, before you could do 999 frames. Now you can do 9,999 frames. Wow, that's a big so jump. So somebody can pretty much set their camera and let it shoot. But the problem was the exposure changed. And if you left it on auto or aperture priority, which is what most people probably would do, between one picture to the next, you would see a, a stutter, like a quick jump. Yeah. So that was noticeable in the frames. Well, you could also now shoot those raws because they're smaller if you want to do time lapse, but that's beside the point. So now the exposure smoothing means that it's going to slowly change the exposure as it changes. That's great. So it's not going to be so noticeable. So that's a, a, a good addition. Uh, it now does 1080 at 60 frames a second, which is new. That's a, a, a fantastic feature. I'm surprised I, they didn't have that on the D4 to begin with. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but honestly... This does 1080 at 60 frames. Um, for anybody at home on the radio or the internets or not listening or, sorry, just listening, that's the D3300 in my hands. That does 1080 at 60 frames a second. But this is full frame. Nice. So now that does that. Uh, change New change levels while recording. You can change the audio levels while recording. You couldn't do that before. And it also has different types of optimizing for voice recording or for a wider pattern for just more general recording. Uh, it, you can also do the auto ISO during uh, video playback, sorry, during video recording, so that it also does the smooth video transitions. So if we were to do one like we did in Las Vegas in the hotel room, and we set it to auto ISO, it allows you to leave your 150th of a second at whatever f-stop you want, and all it's changing smoothly is the ISO. Yeah, that's a great so feature. So with such a large range, the quality probably won't be lost. That's something that if it's just the two of us, or even with three of us, with Sutter over here, if that just changes because we want to shoot on the roof or something, the ISO is going to stay in touch, in, intact there. Yeah. So that's a great option. We're almost to the end of this. Wish we had that in Vegas. Yep. Oh, LCD color adjustment. Something that you really, I don't think you can do in any camera up to this point. It's something that you can do in the Atomos. You can set the LCD with a, a spider to, to get the actual Calibrated. color calibration. Spider doesn't do that yet for the LCD, but Nikon is taking a step closer by giving people the ability to color balance uh, their their LCD, color adjustments. So what you what I would do with that is I'd sit at my computer, have my files on there, and make sure that they look the same on the computer screen as they do on my LCD. That is the closest way that you'll have to do it. You'll have to eye it up. That's a good idea. So that's something that's new and exciting. I think uh, Nikon's pretty pretty solid. They're already set for uh, as far as the LCD screen goes. It's always perfect in my eyes, at least. It's better. Yeah. It's better. I mean, your uh, D4 is pretty spot on every time. Oh, yeah. It's very good. And then they, uh, they still have the 2.7 time crop mode for video. Most people don't even know about that. So 
you can take this camera, put it into 2.7 time crop mode. It's going to do 1080. It's going to literally do 1080 pixels, uh, 1920 by 1080. It's only recording that amount of pixels. So it's like a true, amazing quality. But it, you multiply your lenses by 2.7 which is insane. Hmm. That's an insane range. So you put a 300 millimeter on there, times that by 2.7 and see what kind of video you're going to get. Yeah. It's going to look pretty darn amazing. And the last thing that I have written down here is that it has a new battery that lasts longer, which is something that we all want to last a little longer. And uh, <laughs> well, you, Nikon batteries are always last way longer though than Canon. Like my Canon dies probably at half the rate that... Or double the rate that yours does. Yeah, they do. Well, it's a bigger battery in here. Yeah. But part of the problem when you have when you have video guys is that video guys like to leave their LCD screens on all the time, <laughs> wasting the battery. <laughs> I'm, I'm yelling at A Hing. Uh, his name's Hing. He's one of our camera guys for the Fronos Photo Guide to DSLR <laughs> video, and he's always leaving his LCDs on no matter what. And it just, it's one of my pet peeves. Oh, but anyway, Jared despises that. That's like you're wasting batteries. So when I'm in the middle of a take and your battery dies, anyway, that's the Nikon D4S. Uh, so that to me is some major upgrading right there. No, it's not a full step to the D5 yet, but a new sensor, uh, better focusing, because I was really pissed at the focusing in the old one, new. ISO, low ISO capability. I am going to buy this, and I've mentioned that before I even knew what the specs were. Uh, and people would be like, well, how are you going to drop $6,499? Well, I do this smart. I sell my D4 right now, which should go for $4,500-ish. Four, Probably I, more than that. It, it, it may, because this is $6,499. You can't get a D4. It's possible I could sell it for about five grand. Yeah. Imagine getting five grand out of it. What does that make my D4S cost? Not very much. That makes it $1,499. Yeah, it's not plus bad tax. at all. That is cheaper than buying a D800. Mm -hmm. So that is how I am able to afford going from pro body to pro body to pro body. I've been doing that since I was about 20. Every time a new, well, I was like 22, 20, whatever. When they, whenever I had my D2H, I, well, I actually, it wasn't even at that point. I just cycled the new ones from the D3 on. The D3, sold that to get the D3S, sold the D3S to get the D4, going to sell the D4 to get the D4S because D3s are now, what, like two grand? Oh, yeah. You just lose so much value. i rather have the best of the best of the best with honors, sir, with my D4. So that pretty much wraps up that discussion. I'm going to buy it at Alan's camera. It's going to be hard to get it first for most people uh, because they get them to the pros first that are on NPS. And if you want one, give Alan a call. He'll throw you on the list. But it is going to be $6,499. That's $6,499. That's an expensive camera. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we've got a good show coming up for you. <laughs> it's Steven's turn now to get into the photo news. I just wanted to get to uh, the major news first, which is the D4S, in my opinion. Oh, totally understandable. From there. Yeah. Uh, first off, for news, we have SanDisk. They announced what they're calling the world's fastest SD card, uh, the SDHC SDXC UHS 2 card. Oh, yeah, that's a mouthful. <laughs> it has write speeds of 250 megabytes a second with transfer speeds of 280 megabytes a second, which is three times faster than any current card. Uh, it's UH UHS Speed Class 3 enabled, so uh, it'll allow 4K video recording, which is great. Uh, it offers the highest video performance available with video capture of 30 megabytes a second. Uh, now, the pins are different than the standard SD card. So SanDisk, they also announced the uh, the SanDisk Extreme Pro SD UHS-2 card reader slash writer. Uh, it's the world's first uh, UHS-2 memory card reader writer. Well, basically, you're going to need cameras to accept these first. Exactly. But I think the... Um, uh, who's Who just put out that new one? The uh, X-T1? What, who really? Put, Canon? Yeah. No, 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 not Canon. Um, oh, oh, Fuji. Fuji. That camera accepts apparently the UHS-2 For what cards. reason? I don't know because that's not a video camera yeah. that you're doing. Because this is for video. Well, it seems like it's more for, yeah, 4K, that kind of stuff. Right. And it's interesting to know that, that pros are using SD cards for doing the videos versus Compact Flash or the XQD. And I will tell you that the guys shooting the, the DSLR guide were all using SD cards in, the, in, in 5D Mark III's, mm -hmm. which was very interesting to me that they would use those cards, but they work just as well. So that, that's an interesting card. Um, now, it's available in April in 16 gigabyte to 64 gigabyte capacities uh, at $119.99 to $299.99 price tags. Uh, the card reader will be $49.99. So, uh, yeah, it's, we'll see if people start getting these and cameras start accepting them. I'm surprised, I'm surprised there's not any other cameras out there yet that, you know, 
Well, the UHS announced. I mean, it's, it's interesting. Card technology keeps changing. We don't know what that CFast card is going to do. Yeah. If that's going to be the next, if if pro bodies are going to start moving to SD cards only, we don't know what's going to happen. Or it could just be like another XQD thing where it just kind of flops. You know, no cameras end up taking it on. Hey, I like the XQD <laughs> card. Don't don't question the XQD card in my mind. I love that. I've I've loved that since day one, Stephen. But why has Sony not even put it in their own cameras? Well, that that's always been the question. Makes I no went sense. to their website and it's like. They barely have any cameras. They, they may have some pro models that do it, but somebody needs to jump on board. They really need to get going with that because it is a faster card. It is more reliable. It's like a small SSD hard drive is how they set Pretty it much, up. Yeah. You're not going to bend pins like you do in the compact flash uh, cards. It doesn't have pins, right? It doesn't have pins. It just accepts it like a... It, it looks like an SSD. Yeah. It's a pretty cool setup. All right, good story. Uh, Pocket Wizard, they laid off as many as 20 of its 50 employees, which is nearly half their staff due to low sales figures. Uh, Lighting Rumors cites an email by Pocket Wizard CEO Tim Neely, uh, in which he admits that the company has reduced staff. Supposedly, competition from these Chinese brands uh, has forced the company to pretty much fire and lay off these employees over the course of uh, two rounds of layoffs. So hopefully, this company will build back up, but it looks like well, uh, they lost almost this- half half their staff. This is interesting. Yeah. Uh, I've never dealt with them directly. Mm-hmm. Steven, you can just bring it over. I just need to get some water. Okay. Uh, I've never... Thank you. I've never... So, Pocket Wizards have been around a long time. That's been the mainstay in the industry yeah. for doing this type of work. But the, I can guarantee... Yes. The competition from the China-made ones, they basically reverse engineer everything. And they sell it at 30 bucks, where they're selling it for 99 where they probably are better, the Pocket Wizards. Because I've had my Pocket Wizards for since uh, since college. Since I was 18, I bought one pair. And that's when they... they before Even before the transceivers, transceivers go both ways, yep. like some people. And, <laughs> you know... I've had them. They still work. All they do is send signals. They just keep getting better. I bought the $99 ones recently, bought three of them. Yeah, I, they're just going to have to compete. They're yeah. going to have to compete. I use the Young Nows or whatever, however you pronounce it. Uh, I use them for the 5D, and it works great with Canon systems. I mean, you can literally use it in camera and everything, uh, and they're transceivers, and they're cheaper, you know, a cheaper brand. You could buy so. two of them and have them one as a backup. Yeah. I, I think I have like six or seven of them, and it's just really nice and convenient. I like them over Pocket Wizards personally with, again, Canon. I don't know how Nikon is with that kind of stuff. Sure. Anyway, moving on, we have uh, Fiat has released a new ad that features their 500C car made up of Body painted people. Uh, they took their motto, made of pure muscle, and made it literal. Uh, the image features 15 circus performers, acrobats, artists, and turned them into a car without the help of Photoshop. Again, body painted them. Uh, the shoot was, uh, was done by photographer RJ Muna along with the help of body paint artist Craig Tracy, and it took five days to complete. Uh, Fiat even released a behind-the-scenes video showcasing how they did it and how much work went into this thing. I think it said they took 30 to 40 people to actually plan out the process and just figure it all out. So uh, it's a really interesting video to to check out, and um, it's a cool concept that they put together. Uh, Moving on, we have a U.S. law firm is in the process of filing a class action lawsuit against Nikon for the D600 sensor dust and oil spot issues. Uh, Lief... Cabraser, Hyman, and Bernstein. Oh, Wait a second. <laughs> you so read them again. That? Yeah, where are they? <laughs> the bottom part, the bottom sentence right there. We've got... I'm really bad at pronouncing names, apparently. Leif, Carbraser, Hyman, and Bernstein. So we've got a, a, we've got a German, <laughs> we've got something else, and two Jews. <laughs> that makes up for a great law firm. Yes. All they're missing there is an Asian. Uh, so a law firm, a very diverse law firm with offices in San Francisco, New York, and Nashville... Uh, is currently collecting complaints from D600 users for this class action lawsuit. Here's what they're saying, in quotes, Nikon did not identify the cause for the debris buildup on the D600 sensor, nor acknowledge, as many consumers have alleged, uh, that this is a widespread problem with the camera. To eliminate the unwanted and distracting spots in their photos, D600 owners have had to repeatedly send the camera in to service technicians for cleaning at great inconvenience and cost, end quote. Uh, there's a whole contract form on the law firm's website with information about the suit uh, for those that want to contribute and you know add their two cents to this thing. Yeah, Nikon really screwed the pooch on this one. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to curse, but I, I was thinking about not doing it. I don't they know why I just really botched it. Yeah. Like they, they completely screwed the pooch, like you just said. <laughs> where Canon screwed up years ago with the uh, 1D Mark III, mm-hmm. where they had focus issues that just totally made everybody switch to Nikon at the time. They Nikon screwed up here. They release a D610 within a year. 
knowing that there were major issues, they it's like a car recall. Yeah, they should have much. recalled them and said, send them in. We're replacing them. Eat the loss. Just do it. Um, I don't like the lawyers to begin with here. You know, I, well, obviously, they're probably what just they trying get? to collect gonna, their own, gonna, you know, get some money. So out here, of this. Here's what's going to happen. Nikon will put a bunch of money aside into a bank account that generates a lot of interest mm. so that when they do lose after they do lose this case, they will basically appeal, 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 drag it out. And by the time it comes to fruition, the money that they put in the bank has gained enough interest to basically pay for everything that they lost. It's the same thing that happened with the Exxon Valdez spill. If you remember that, you, you remember oh, yeah. the Exxon I remember. Valdez? I was young. I mean, that was like 1988, I believe. I was eight I was, or 87. Uh, then I don't remember that because I was born that year. <laughs> All right. I think that was 1988. I, then I guess I just heard about it after. Well, what happened is Exxon had to pay back like six billion dollars so what they did is they put six billion dollars aside back then and they fought and fought and fought and kept stretching it out so by the time they paid it they had like another they already made all that they made all this money off that interest so they made money off of stretching it out anyway this isn't about oil companies and and stuff like that no but, i didn't know they do that kind of stuff though that's interesting oh, well if you can stretch it out and you can put money away to get more interest so basically lessen your losses why so not is that do why it? They, that's why they just appeal all the time because of well, because the reason that they do that stuff in business is the long, especially if they're going against somebody smaller, is that they'll bleed the person dry. Hmm. They won't have enough money to fight anything in the future because that's just what happens. They drag stuff out so long that you can't afford to fight them because lawyer fees and, and everything else. It's just that's how they bleed you dry. Major corporations. Gotta love the, uh, the justice system. Uh, well, it, it's worked for yeah. the most part over the last 200 and some years. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's true. All right. Uh, we have, there's a new mobile app by Dyer Studio. It's called Mark II Artist Viewfinder that lets photographers and cinematographers use their favorite viewfinder, basically, with your iPhone. The app simulates hundreds of camera viewfinders and lens combinations all on the screen, again, of your iPhone. There's even a quick control screen that features autofocus lock, auto exposure lock, even a customizable function key, and uh, more. Features over 620 camera viewfinders from small format to large format. Uh, the only gripe I have with this is that it costs $25. Come which on! Is insane. Are you kidding me? I was gonna buy it today, and I saw the How price, much? and I'm like, "Are you kidding me? Twenty five bucks?" Yeah, yeah. Welcome to never gonna sell any of them yep. in my life. Never gonna give you up. <laughs> never gonna say goodbye. Never blah 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 blah. I'm Rick rolling you. That's that's a bunch of malarkey. It is. That if it was five bucks, I would maybe think about it. Maybe four ninety nine because it's awesome and it's gonna add a lot of stuff. But nobody, very few people. Let me refreeze it. Free. Rephrase that. In my opinion, are going to purchase that thing for twenty bucks. Oh, I agree. Twenty bucks or twenty four. Twenty five. Twenty five dollars. Twenty five. Because I, I saw. I didn't even read about it. I just saw it on the screen. It looked pretty cool. Yeah. But for twenty five dollars, here's the problem. It's just people. a viewfinder. It's not actually really doing it's much. It's not doing more. anything. It's just a viewfinder. Well, it also has some more custom functions you can do. But there's not really much more you can do with it. The thing is, you want to make apps. You want to make them free, or you want to make them as free. Or you want to do freemium model. Exactly. You give away a little bit. And then if you want all of the all the extra goodies, you charge ninety nine yeah, cents, a dollar ninety nine app expenses or whatever. I, I bought Snapseed for four ninety nine, and a couple months later they made it free. Mm -hmm. I didn't get upset. I, that's just the price of the cost of doing business. I bought it. That app is fantastic, and that app is worth the four ninety nine. That too. app was worth four ninety nine. Sure. That makes me not want to use like Lightroom Mobile if that even ex it does exist. Does it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I still need the now that I have the new computer going. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get the Apple Creative Cloud. Yeah. For nine ninety nine a month, I'm gonna lock into that hopefully because I want to get the Start new Photoshop. Fresh. That I mean, but I don't even use it. So, I'll, but I'll probably do it anyway. Uh, yeah. Photo well, you news. just bought Lightroom Five though. I still think you should just that add that. Yeah, throw that license on the new computer, and you'll be good to go. It is already there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, next up, we have a photographer named Kathy Shea Mormino. Can I interrupt you for a second? <laughs> What's up? Well, Sutter's over here. Yeah. Sir, look up at that camera. He has his new glasses. <laughs> I don't know how well that's going to see me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, all right. Well, anyway, he's got his new glasses. I'm sure you could go to his Instagram. Did you put up a picture of your glasses yet? Nope. You Not going yet? to? You didn't do it the day you got it? No. Well, tell no, him what your Instagram is. <laughs> uh, my Instagram is Stephen underscore Sutter, S-T-E-P-H-E-N underscore S-U-T-T-E-R. Got it. So you can follow Stephen Sutter over there and all his emo adventures. <laughs> and back to photo news. Uh, back to photo news. Again, a photographer named Kathy Shea Mormino is in an ongoing copyright battle with survival. Survival magazine for the unauthorized use of one of her images. Uh, she owns the website The Chicken Chick, and she's also an attorney, which is pretty helpful. Bah! 
Uh, the the uh, the magazine used her image as the cover photo for their Facebook page without her consent, which is the image of various chickens around a bunch of eggs. Uh, the magazine even removed her watermark, which is obviously a Whoa. big no-no. Y- yeah, that's a big no-no. Keep going. Um, Kathy first politely asked the magazine to remove the image via a Facebook comment when they updated the actual cover, uh, which the magazine then deleted, and she has a screenshot of the actual comment, so she did do it. And then Kathy then filed a copyright infringement complaint to Facebook, which they then carried out a few hours later. Uh, now, according to the magazine, she filed about 10 takedown notices for posts that had nothing to do with her. Her watermark wasn't removed. Her photo was removed immediately after they found out about the infringement, not from her, but from Facebook. They claim she never got in touch. Uh, and her reaction was all around malicious. Now, that's what the magazine says. Now, Kathy has a screenshot of the comment, like I said, for proof. And she has a nasty email that someone also from the magazine sent her in which they called her basically an a-hole several times, accused her of filing several takedown fake takedown takedown notices and says that they will be suing her and contacting all of her sponsors for basically having them to remove their paid posts and sponsored posts and stuff like that. So they're trying to retaliate that way, but in a very unprofessional way. So, I, I mean, that's well, that's both sides uh, of the story. what does she want? Nothing? Uh, she just basically wanted credit them to take it down. Yeah, and credit. So wh- who who's contacting whose sponsors? Uh, the magazine that said that she's gonna, they're going to contact the sponsors, I guess, of her website, The Chicken Chick. I'm assuming that's all they said. They just, they just said contacting all of her sponsors. Fuck them. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Like, in the, this is what we have to deal with today as yeah. photographers. We have to, and, and sorry, earmuffs for anybody listening with kids. Too just late. rewind six <laughs> seconds again and say earmuffs or just gloss over it because the kids won't even know what it means anyway. Um, the... The fact that we deal with this all the time, and is that my phone? I'm going to sneeze. Do you anyway. want it? No, I don't need it. I don't need it. I just, I'm not used to it. That's why I don't put it on the marble, marble countertops, because <laughs> it vibrates when you put it up. Then you get distracted. Then I get distracted. <laughs> um, we're trying not to be distracted today. So, so basically, we deal with this all the time. Mm-hmm. Somebody takes your photos, you ask them to take it down, or you could pay to keep using it. One, they said they took away their water, her watermark, which they obviously did when she took a screen grab and exactly. saw that it wasn't there. Yeah. And she took a screen grab that somebody sent her a message and somebody sent her a nasty email. She's probably not making it up. She's not even asking for anything, I don't think. But they're trying to sue her. They can kiss my ass and kiss the chicken chick's ass also. <laughs> All right, next, no, next news story. Uh, next up, a behind-the-scenes video showcasing how a photo shoot with Kate Upton Hello, hello. Went down in zero gravity for uh, Sports Illustrated is now online. Or went up in zero gravity. <laughs> Ooh, good. Photographer James Mac- McCarry. Gravity, <laughs> stay the hell away from me. I'm just never going to mention gravity ever on this podcast. Because gravity always gets paid down. Because half as much isn't half as bad as it never was. It is, say, where, st- Sutter, where's your guitar? Where's your guitar, son? Oh Buy the God. jackets. Where are the jackets? On your uh, arcade game in the hallway. <laughs> Is he really running over there to pretend to play a guitar that he can't play? Is that what you're doing? Pick- John Mayer? What is this thing? A pick holder? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Gravity. Stay a hell away from me in gravity you play just like john mayer i play left-handed he's really good guitar player always gets me down thank you mr mayor now smash the guitar Uh, anyway, what was I saying? Um, so yeah, there's this. Well, I, you were just saying something that involved gravity. Yeah, basically, this behind-the-scenes <laughs> video with Kate Upton in zero gravity from Sports Illustrated. Anyway, photographer James Mac- M- Macari photographed her with her with his assistance on the Vomit Comet. It's called. Uh, in yeah, zero the Vomit gravity. Comet because it does parabolas. Do you know what a parabola is? A parabola? I don't know. So this is what happens. Isn't this it is a parabola. No, it's a, it does parabolas. <laughs> It probably is. <laughs> yeah, those. So what happens is they have a 747. Yeah. All right? And it does this. Thanks, Stephen. Stephen's holding up the 30-minute mark. So basically it does this up and over down, and over. Like so when you're coaster. going up, 
you're you're in your seat, and as soon as it comes down, that's you get about a minute worth of uh, dive time. Gotcha. And that's when you get the zero G effect. Okay. Um, now, so there wasn't much to the shoot, basically, besides a DSLR and an on-camera flash pointed directly at her, pretty harsh. Wait, it sounds like Terry Richardson pointed at you <laughs> shooting it hard. Uh, it's a really funny video though, because once they do, when, once they actually hit zero gravity, they're all just bouncing around. It's chaotic. It's just insane. I don't know how they even got a decent shot out of well, it. Well, you don't need a tripod. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> it looks like they're, they should have been like tied down or something because. Once they go zero gravity, people are just like, whoa, like trying to hold up lights and it's just everywhere. <laughs> That's <and> cool. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny to check out. Um, moving on, we have with top level domain names like .com and .net being registered each day, ICANN, the company behind managing domain names, has been releasing more and more top level domain names with now new photography term names. Uh, as of this month, ICANN released six new domains that are specifically linked to photography, including dot photography dot gallery dot graphics dot camera and one more dot, dot lighting my balls and dot equipment uh, ranging in price from sixteen dollars a year to thirty five dollars a year the domains are now available from widely used and trusted domain registrars screw you stop trying to gouge the public if you do not have a dot com name you're nothing now i'm not saying you're nothing because some people have the dot nets because sometimes it works the point is i'm not going to buy a dot photography domain name is it dot photography? Dot photography, yep. How long is that, right? They tried dot XXX. Do you know it, it didn't work? It didn't work because nobody goes to like Pornhub dot XXX. Hey, can you check out Pornhub dot XXX? <laughs> it's not dot XXX? <laughs> See, it's dot com because it's on there right it's like now. I'm certain of it. Um, but, that, but that's the thing. All of these extra domain names are are worth I'm not spending money to dot pro like they came out with dot pro I don't want that no I, I agree now they're also trying to offer discounts because they know no one's gonna they're just trying to get names. more money yeah, yeah well and they're running out of actual dot com I mean well, yes I, like for example I have there's probably about 50 other Steven Eckerts out there in the world if you google my name there's a million different there's like a lawyer there's all kinds of people but anyway like Steven com I think is taken there's a bunch of other websites the regular dot com domain that's taken so I mean this is a decent alternative if people actually used it, if it was realistic, which hey, so, uh, no one's going to use. It's Jared Poland dot photography. I mean, it's a good concept, but the realistic no, dot photo point of it, is a better concept. Yeah, I dot agree. photography just adds more crap. The whole point is to simplify this stuff, not exaggerate it more. Well, and to link it to whatever business or you know, right? So career you have. I'm I'm not buying any dot photos. I'm not buying dot pro. All right. Anytime I come up with anything new, I buy the dot com, and think, then the dot edu, and then all that other yeah, crap I think to go dot along com with is it. Totally sometimes. acceptable. But yeah. Uh, moving on, we have there's a very interesting new mini documentary. You will like this on National Geographic. Uh, National Ge Geographic photo archivist Bill Bonner. It takes an in-depth look at their vintage photo archive. He's responsible for main maintaining about 8 million photographs. And apparently he's seen every single one, obviously. The archive is housed in a cold, windowless basement at National Geographic's headquarters in Washington. In a world <laughs> in a cold, windowless basement in Washington. And according to... Nat John Bonner. Uh, Bill Bonner. Bill Bonner leaves all humanity to look at all 8 million photos that took him 60 years to look at as he archives them one at a time. Steven, please add some reverb to my voice when I get to this point so I can be like Mr. Movie Phone. Tonight's movies are... I don't know. <laughs> Gravity. <laughs> uh, now, according to Nat Geo, he can name you the photographer, location, assignment it was taken on, uh, and what was happening in any photograph in that archive, which that man must have a really good memory to remember 8 million photographs and where they were taken and who took them. Uh, we also have BuzzFeed. They released a new video that features average everyday women being photographed and then professionally retouched in post. BuzzFeed. Adding new everyday women to photography shoots at BuzzFeed.photography. Now, the best part is that they actually prefer their before images over the photoshopped ones. Uh, some examples of what they say, they, what they said include how they hate ha that their, you know, the freckles were removed, uh, how it adds character. The things originally. that make them who they are. Exactly, exactly. And now, how that's what they use to strive for, you know, perfection, but not anymore after seeing these kind of photos, how it just looks, they look fake. You know, yeah. they don't look like themselves. Uh, another example of how the world is turning, you know, towards naturally edited images and not overly processed, photoshopped, touched images. Yep. Uh, the Atlantic posted, you showed me this, uh, vintage photos from the first 12 Winter Olympics. Uh, it dates back to 1924 for the first Winter Olympics uh, in France to 1976. Uh, so France. France. To France. 
What? I don't know. <laughs> really interesting black and white photographs, though. There's even a couple uh, color pictures thrown in, which I think were like the 40s and 50s, so really early color photography. Photos were fantastic, man. Very fantastic. Just I mean, looking at some of the... The Switzerland one, I believe, in color yeah. of the people walking into the ice palace or whatever they called it was so incredible. Well, it's, I love these vintage shots. They're just so they have so much more meaning and power, so much character to them. And it's just it's also amazing how they could capture the action back then. I mean, oh, yeah, even the 1924 shots were pretty, pretty interesting well, to did, check out. So going off on the side, it was kind of photo news. There was that photo of a woman saving the kid's life by doing mouth to mouth. Did you see that photo? I did not. It's a terrible photo. Yeah. But people are like, this is an incredible photo. No, it's an incredible moment that somebody took a snapshot of. That, that I mean, that's just what happens. The photos, in my opinion, it's, it's just a snapshot. It did, I don't even know what, maybe it wasn't even shot with a DSLR. Maybe it was just shot with an iPhone, which doesn't matter. Don't jump down my throat for saying that because that's not the point. The point is you can get great photos with anything. Just saying, in general, that photo did not come across as a great photo. It captured an amazing moment that woman saved that kid's life. Yes, but I, I, I can't go out there and tell you that it's an amazing photo. It's the amazing moment captured. Yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, moving on now, this is kind of to end our story from last week. The color run debacle has ended. Debacle. Debacle. This one <laughs> debacle is debacle has ended with both parties reaching an agreement outside of the court system. Uh, from the beginning, you want to add? Well, something? I was going to say this happened. Uh, we recorded the episode, and it, the day that it was going live was the day that they announced that they came up with an agreement. Exactly, yeah. So from the beginning, the color run notes that they had a contractual use agreement with Max, which uh, was poorly worded and vague, apparently. Uh, the founder, Travis Snyder, listed a few lessons that he learned via the public update. Some of the quotes that he said, the lessons that he learned are, uh, first, quote, if you, are a, if you are a business, be explicitly clear about the use, compensation, and parameters of the agreement with the photographer when sourcing images. Uh, make sure it's, it is all in writing in order to protect each other. Uh, next one we have, if you are a photographer... Understand the level of access you are providing and also protect yourself with clear written release agreements. And lastly, if a misunderstanding arises, enter into a respectful and ethical discussion about how to resolve the issue. In our new social slash visual slash online world, businesses and photographers need a great relationship more than ever. Assume the best in each uh, in each other and make it work. End quote. I think they're they're great three lessons that every photographer should uh, they're basic, definitely live by. They're basic points. They are. And it just goes to show you that they didn't have that g going forward. And then Max obviously made a stink about it, yeah. uh, saying that they screwed him over and, and all of this. And uh, like what we did is we found all the facts. Mm -hmm. There were w other websites out there that were just really leading to ripping apart the color run. They were. They just, they went... And it just, it was slanted that way. We, I went and, and you went and read all the facts first and we discussed it. And then I saw on my Facebook page that I guess it's Max's father left a YouTube video for us, you and I, yes. saying that you guys at Frono's Photos. Oh yeah, he pluralized it. I like that. You guys at Frono's <laughs> Photos were part of the reason why he was able to get this done. And thank you for knowing all the facts and thank you for being on his side. And I just have to tell you, we weren't on his side. I, it, I wasn't generally on his side i i felt that the color run was probably exactly how we explained it was they're probably both at fault yeah but the way that max went about doing this or his dad or max or whoever was uh, counseling him the lawyers or whatever just took it too far too far it could have been handled without any of this stuff going on or on the flip side, maybe people would say that if he didn't do this, they would have never come to the table and worked anything out. So there's possibly that. So Max's dad or Max, if you're watching, you want to come and give us some commentary. You want to call us uh, and, and do an interview or something. We'll do it. I'll just ask you some hard hitting questions and see if you got answers for him. So just Max, you, you're watching Jared at Frono's photo dot com. Let's uh, you want to you want to chime in? Tell us what you think. Come yeah. on in. Yeah, I mean, maybe we, you know, the full, full story is not out there. Now, they also didn't disclose the exact details about this agreement. Uh, obviously, I guess just to keep it, you know. Right. Sometimes you have to push. Very private. Yeah. Sometimes you have to push somebody to the edge in order to make something happen. Mm -hmm. But the last thing I want to do is involve lawyers personally because I just know that all the money goes out the window. Well, I'm surprised that they reached an agreement because I think uh, the founders, what he was saying last time in his open letter was that, you know, he was going to yeah. sue him, not, well, <laughs> not what happens? Extorted. But what happens 
is that when cooler heads prevail, yeah. when you actually sit down and discuss, see, this is the problem with emails and text messages is that people jump to conclusion, Matt's way too quick. They're just, if you read an email, you misread it because you can't read context very well and you can't see how somebody's body language is. So something, if it was poorly written, I'm very, very careful because you know how my emails are. You know how I just... How very vague and vague they <laughs> are at times. Are. So when I'm sending more professional type emails with more details, I now have to multiple multiple times reread them to make sure that one line isn't being perceived this way. Actually, it's what happens when I put up videos and things on YouTube or when I do videos. I have to make sure that if I catch myself saying something that will be perceived the wrong way and how I don't want it, that I correct myself because I, I know that people will jump down your throat. So you just have to you just have to be. Or they'll cordial. jump down your throat if you misspell something. Well, I misspell <laughs> something all the time. That's just the nature. I, I know, but I love how people comment. Like, that's the whole common thing. You misspelled this. Misspelled this. Yeah, misspelled thanks. This. All right, thank you. I misspelled this, and I misused the word two for, by accident. What, T-O-O? Which I get T-O-O, T-O-O. right when I'm explaining when it's two. You know, yeah. this two. I get that. But sometimes I'm just, it's midnight, or it's, no excuses. I, I mess it up. Hey, it's like me I didn't and, do well in me English. Me and mispronouncing names and certain First words. off, I did terrible in English. I yeah. never did well. I couldn't get it. English I was my worst subject. I just I would sit there and these teachers would be like, underline the adverb. And I'm like, I still don't know what that is today. <laughs> I just, I couldn't do it. What's the conjunction here? I'm like, conjunction, junction. What's your function? I don't know. Great song. I don't know this stuff. I just never could wrap my head around it. Math, I could wrap my head around because I could look at the numbers. Yeah. And I could play around like it was a game. It just made sense to me. I was the same way. I was all about math and hated I love science but I also hated I love English. science man Eng- I also just I'm not a huge fan of reading a ton of novels and, and right. that kind of thing for pleasure at least you know just <laughs> what are you gonna just say just Pornhub <laughs> <laughs> that's for pleasure I was waiting for that dot xxx alright <laughs> what, what else do you have uh, that's it actually that is photo news a lot of a lot of big in depth stories so definitely uh, check these all out on the website yep all the photo stories are over there on the site each and every week and we'll also put up a photo news preview video that uh, you guys can watch and so I just want to throw out there too again for the millionth time that link for all the no- news stories is under the photo news preview article in YouTube, in the description, people are always like, there's no link. That is the link, the yeah. Raw Talk link. We always have the link. It just, the whole point no one is ever... to get people back to the website to yeah. read the full stories. That's what it's there for. So just click on that. Just they always like, where's the links? Where are the links? It's right there. All Where right. The so video? I'm going to jump into the fact that the video guide is officially wrapped. Eight full days of shooting. I would say five of them were about 12 hour days. We did on location shooting at the bowling alley. We did a, uh, Maria acted in one of the roles, Mm -hmm. which was at a bar, which was a like a a short three page story. That's really fun to watch. There's so much learning that went on in this. We had my rap video, which was very interesting. I wish I was there for that day. Yeah, you missed it. Was that the day I was sick? It was Friday. Oh, and that's the day I'm at the radio station. Yeah. Yeah. So we did that. Um, Let me see. Oh, yeah. And then and then I paid the crew at the end of the at the end of their job. Mm -hmm. It's funny. I handed the first guy a check and he goes, what? We get paid at the end of the shoot. I'm like, why would you not get paid at the end of the shoot? See, that's one of those things in photography that if I'm hiring an assistant and they do their job, I give them a check. I pay them at the end of their job because their job is done. Why? And if I have to wait 30 days or 60 days to get paid, then I wait 30 days or 60 days to get paid. My employees, they should not be waiting to be paid. Uh, so when somebody finishes a job for me, I give them a check. You Same are great thing. with that. You are really, really good with that. That's the way to do it. And it's just, it sucks to make somebody wait three months, six months for a paycheck. That's just not how it should work in, mm-hmm. in business when you're working. So I know that there's photographers out there that m- make their assistants wait until they personally get paid in order to pay them. That's just being cheap. That's flat out being cheap. And I, I don't want to operate that way. I know my dad was always this way. He, he always, you do a job, you get paid. Yeah. I do a job. I want to get paid, but I also know that in business, people, uh, you got to submit invoices and they want to do the net 30. Uh, so it doesn't always work that way. But I handed everybody a check as soon as they were done for their job. Somebody asked about what it costs to create a video guide. Um, the very first guide I can tell you, uh, just giving you, I think I spent about $7,000 in filming. And that was before I, I didn't have much, right? I invested in myself. I invested in this thing, and it was seven grand. It was only two shooters. It was Todd who shot everything. 
all the angles, and it was uh, and an audio guy because audio is extremely important. Oh yeah. So we did that, and it was about seven grand in just production costs. And as the the flash guide was more because we brought we upped the production. We had two guys shooting. We had extra people helping in the background. Now this guide it was even more intense because we did eight full days. It was a big crew too. Yeah. So we had uh, usually five guys all the time. If not six plus you came out and then Sutter helped very much, which mm -hmm. I appreciate. And it's a lot more expensive. So it, it gets expensive, but it's part of doing business and making the quality go up and, and just making things better. I'm not going to go into exact numbers there, but you could think about a car. Yeah. Some kind of car. That sounds about right. Uh, so, so yeah, the, the filming went great. I do have a place where you guys can sign up to get on a, a specific email list just for information about the flash guide as we video, video guide. guide. Yeah, video guide. Thank you guys. I love how we both jumped. Thank you guys. Uh, for the video guide to the DSLR video guide, you'll be able to sign up. And whenever we roll out some teases and show you previews, and uh, on this list is where I will pick the people that get to do the review copies, which means they get a free copy to review it and try to find out, you know, basically tell us what they think about it. So being on this list, the way that you get on this list, and one, there is a link over on the website that will take you to the page where you can do this. But it is, you can sign up for the update at fronosphoto.com slash DSLR hyphen video hyphen guide. Just remember DSLR video guide and just hyphenate the things in between. Hit enter. It's going to take you to the page. You sign up for the email list and you will only get emails about the video guide. The you, DSLR video guide. You love your hyphens. Well, we put the hyphens in there just because it, it's it's easy. Yeah. DSLR video guide. It's just if you put DSLR video guide all at the end, it's just easier with the hyphens. I actually think people remember DSLR hyphen video hyphen guide. And then hit enter. So sign up there. Uh, we're we're going to be rolling out a lot of behind the scenes things until this thing comes out in a bunch of months. 1.8 terabytes of data. A lot part, of data. part of the reason there's 1.8 terabytes is that a lot of the video crew like to keep their cameras rolling <laughs> every time. Because you, what? Holla. Holla. Thank <laughs> you. Because they they just leave it running all the time. All right. So that's enough about the video guide. It was a blast. What what'd you think? I thought it was great. I mean, I just pretty much almost sat there half the time because my job was basically to do behind the scenes video and stills most of the time. But it's really tough to do that when you know you have a sound guy that needs everything completely quiet. You know, no dead noise kind of thing. And also with. Luckily, the 5D Mark III has a silent shutter mode. So Which I we found that. out is one of the more silent modes oh, uh, yeah. of all the cameras. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I, I would prefer like a blimp or something in this case. But because like uh, some of the on location shoots was it was so quiet in there that even that I really couldn't take much stills. So, did you learn anything? I learned a, a lot. I mean, I basically refreshed my memory on that kind From of stuff. From school. Yeah. So it's like sitting through a college class without having to go to college. Pretty much, I would say. Yeah. I mean, I did also more like hands-on stuff in class but i obviously couldn't do it when i'm doing right behind which, the we, stuff. which we were doing and that's the yeah. whole point of the guide yeah. sutter what'd you think um i think it was really good all the information was really solid um what nothing i'm just looking you, uh what I'm oh, blinking. I, th I thought you were rolling your eyes no no i was just blinking oh okay <laughs> It, it was interesting for the for the sound though. Uh, is he done? No, he didn't. He didn't even get started. He stopped. <laughs> Sorry. Himself. No, I, I did like everything. The on location shoots were uh, very informative because you took everything that you guys taught in here and just put them into practical uses. So maybe if someone didn't get something here, once you put it into a real use, it that applied education um, would uh, further everything and help everyone along. Thank you, Sutter. Yep. Yeah, it was, it was just basically much more detailed and broken down for the most part. And the, the sound, though, was interesting how many different microphones he used and different lav mics and just backup mics, shotgun mics. Oh, yeah. Booms everything and in between. Everything. Yeah, and just one person doing it all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the audio guy, you can't forget that audio is extremely important when it comes to video. Because if you can't hear it, if you can't hear it, it's not very good. Agreed. Uh, Squarespace, I did a critique of the what I said was quite possibly the worst photo website ever geo photography cities? website it looked like a geo city <laughs> site if you guys haven't seen that video go check it out uh it, it's yes i'm pretty harsh in it it's one of my harshest critiques ever but i also think because it was so harsh in a positive way that there is so much information in there to help you see what you may be doing possibly wrong on your site uh so squarespace you want to sign up for a 14 day free trial go to squarespace dot squarespace dot com slash fro get your 14 day free trial if you want to sign up after that use code fro or 
you can use Fro or you could use Raw Talk to get 10% off your first order. All right, skipping past that, uh, I bought a D3300 recently. Ruby Red. In Ruby Red. <laughs> like, uh, what's her name? Slippers, Dorothy. <laughs> it doesn't smell like Dorothy, though. Uh, I bought this because I want to start shooting with it more. I want to do video. I want to do photos. I want to show people that you can go and shoot just about anything with an entry-level camera. 650 bucks, I believe, is what it's going to cost you with this lens. And that's that's, that's great. Kind of why on I bought thing? it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what, what's the, isn't like the native ISO, ISO like 12,800 yeah, or something? that is the native ISO. Wow. You know, 6400's pushing it. I played around with it, even with the kit lens. But the functions and features in this camera are insane compared to where we've started. I just think of when I had my 70. Um, I mean, that was 6400 native, but I would never go past really 4,000. I would barely hit 4,000. That's that where just, I kind of draw my lines yeah, at 4,000. It's a little too noisy, especially the color noise for the most part. But this thing, I'm sure you can push... 6400 and it'll still be decent yeah and and, and it's, it's 1080 at 60 frames a second that's great it's fantastic slow it, motion yeah yeah there, there's a you know it's not laid out like a pro camera so when i go in the live view it's tiny well i don't like the fact said. yeah thank you <laughs> when you go into live view mode to do video it it basically shows you the whole screen Okay. But when you hit record is when it shows you the actual black lines, black lines. Wow. So you just have to remember it is actually the bottom of the text and the, and the top of the text is the frame area. But it doesn't show you until you hit record. Yeah, it doesn't show you until you hit record and it doesn't give you all the video functions on the screen when you're in live view. Huh. So you have to do that. You have to set that separately, which is it is what it is. I mean, it's a sick. I'm not going to sit there and bash it and say, oh, my God, it doesn't do everything my pro camera does because it's not even close to that. But it does do it has a mic input and oh, it nice. allows you to change the levels. It's just like the D4 when Manual. you change your That's levels. Nice. You have all the abilities to do that. What I, what I don't like about Nikon is that they every every single model they have, whether it's pro or consumer or whatever, it they switch up the, the, the buttons, the buttons, the functionality. The buttons are all the same from the well, I'm just thinking like the D800 to the D4. Same. Uh, are they? Yeah. No. Yeah. Buttons are all in the same place. Even on the back? Down to here. Well, the buttons are all in the same place generally on the back. The menu systems all work the same. Menu systems are the and same. I agree on that. every single one has the, the record button here now. I just feel like Canon is much more fluid when it comes to keeping the and models And I don't, think, I don't agree same. with that because going from the 50Ds and the 60Ds, they had a button layout over here. And then when you go to the other, they were all over the place. I don't know. Maybe just because I'm a Canon user, I'm saying that, but... That's what I personally think. That's all good. <laughs> anyway, so I picked this up just to... Uh, Alan's had it. They only had ruby red and silver. I didn't want silver. I wanted ruby so red. they don't do just black, huh? They do it just black. They were out of it. Oh, okay. Because I guess more people bought that than ruby nobody red. nobody wants ruby red. I liked. The, I actually <laughs> liked the ruby red. I licked it. You know? I wanted to see how it was. It's so shiny. So, yeah. That's it. Going to use that. That's a good thing to have. And the last thing that I want to talk about before we get into gear of the week and wheel of fro is the, uh, the iMac migration that just finished after ah, yes. 20 freaking hours. Nice. Uh, so my new iMac came in uh, roughly three weeks ago, <laughs> and it's been sitting in its box on the floor, not doing anything while I've been busy going away shooting Modest and then coming back and preparing for the video guide shoot. And um, what are you looking at? Nothing. Okay, so t last night I decided I would set it up next to my other computer or real close that I could plug an Ethernet cable in. And what the iMac, what Apple allows you to do, they have a migration tool assistant. And what that means is there's a program that you would activate on both systems that literally transfer all of the data from one to the other. But it's, it's still, you know, I was on the old operating system on my old computer and then Mavericks is on the new one. So it's not just making a clean copy of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just making a copy of everything. It's taking all the software and putting it on the other computer and putting all your files where they were. So everything that was on my other computer, yes, it's putting it onto here. Now, I found that that's what Adam suggested to do. And Adam actually owned a Mac repair company back in the day. Oh, really? He, was a, he had a huge company. He, he had a big, pretty big company. Huh? He owned it. Yeah. He owned a company that, that was a, a, a reseller and dealt with networks and dealt with a lot of different things. It was hmm. really cool. He had a bunch of contracts for that. Um, but he, he said, look... You could, you could sit with your old computer and try to clean it up as much as possible. He's like, you're better off just getting everything over and then dealing with it later if you want to get rid of stuff there. So it finally finished. I let it go. I mean, it went from 12 hours to 74 hours. And then finally, this morning when I woke up, it said three hours and 45 minutes. And by the time I got back after my workout, it said 18 minutes. And then finally it finished. And it's like completed successfully. And I sat down and everything was right there on the desktop where it was. So I still have that dirty ass desktop. <laughs> nice and unorganized. <laughs> nice and unorganized. Looks, the screen's much nicer. 
but everything uh, I opened Photoshop and it took four seconds. We should do a test on your old one too to see, see how, how much it's just so much slower. But the new one is so blazing fast. So that migration tool, really quick. They even have a tool, Stephen, if you want to migrate from a PC, <laughs> that it will do the same thing. It is interesting that uh, like PC, I'm sure there's many much a lot of software out there basically that does the same thing, but. I'm, I was unaware that there was options like that. I usually start fresh, which I hate, but at the same time, I also like it because I'm yeah. very un- unorganized when it comes to my desktop. Yep. My photos and videos, they're extremely organized in my media, but when it comes to personal documents and, and stuff like that, it's all over the place. Yeah. And my buddy, my roommate, um, he used to work for like Circuit City and stuff as like one of the repair dudes for fixing computers. Every time he comes to my room, he's like, oh my God. Well, it's like a nightmare, a bomb dropped on your desktop. That's the thing. The... <clears throat> It's great to start new, but with so much soft, so many programs already installed, the fact that it gets it all done and they're all ready to use it's right off the convenient. bat is pretty awesome. And for someone like you, for you know, being how busy you are, it's really convenient. It was, it was, it was really good. Hing, you want to come in? Your gear of the week. It's time to just show us a demonstration in the background of your jib. Oh, so yeah. what, what we have right here in the background, and, and Hing's going to come out from my office. He just had to come pick up. You guys can't see the area that we don't use. It's kind of a staging area of... Uh, <laughs> this is Hing, everybody. <laughs> Hing's not going to talk because he's not mic'd up. But Hing, why don't you show us... So that whole thing fits into there or just the jib part? Just the jib part fits into this. So wow. just the jib fits into... And that's the jib up here. Why don't you move it out into the middle for us? So basically, Hing has this beautiful sticks, great tripod, and this is what he works on a lot. So he's got a a 5D Mark III up top, and it has a fluid head. Who makes it? Sackler? Sackler. Sackler. And this is called a Portage Jib Travel by... By Lost Mandy. Lost Mandy. They make telescopes. Oh, they make telescopes. Hmm, All right. So this this is a behemoth. And I asked him how much it costs total. We're looking at about twelve thousand dollars because the sticks themselves are seven grand. Wow. But if this is your live livelihood and you're using this every single day, it loads up into that case behind there. And uh, hey, you know what? Get him a card. Do you have a card in there? I don't even have batteries. Can Can you grab some? Are they uh, carbon fiber legs? Too? They are or carbon sticks? fiber. Wow. But I, the reason I'm asking Hing to grab a battery and cards... You want to show the we quality We might as well show how that works. I guess. And we might as well <laughs> while we're at it because we, we wanted to have him use it all show. Stephen, how are we on time? Uh, we're a couple minutes out from an hour. Gotcha. Okay, good. We're good. Yeah. We're pretty much good. As long, Hing will get that started. But the, this, for the video guy, adds motion. Oh, it's Whenever great. you add motion when it comes to video... Or sorry, when you just add extra motion, I do a lot of static shots because I shoot alone a lot of times. Yeah, it's, you can't so, really operate a jib. Right, I can't he- operate a jib unless Hing wants to get a remote control from his house, which I'm sure he has. Hing has everything. Hing do they has do that? every they do remote control jib. I don't himself? know. Do wow. Oh my god. So yes, he How could much does do that. Cost? How much does that cost, Hing? <laughs> All right, more than what we have. But Hing has every single toy. He's got a, a, a flying. It's not called a drone. It's called a what? A copter. They don't call him, he doesn't call them drones. They're hmm. called copters, but he can put a red camera on it. Wow. It yeah. supports that much. It does. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty insane. So that would be pretty cool. So he's going to set up the jib. The jib just gives you some nice fluid movements. Uh, just let me know when you're good to go. And this jib is balanced for those wondering. Yep. Oh, yeah. So he yelled at me because it's bounced. It will sit anywhere you want it to you sit. You can just let go. You can just let go and it's not going to move. And I'm assuming, yeah, you know, obviously when you change cameras, you have to rebalance, I'm assuming, right? Yep. Yeah. Just tweak it a little bit. Uh, well, there's there quick weights on the back convenient. and everything. So, Hing, you want to go ahead and just uh, jib it, jib us? Oh yeah, I'm gonna format this card. Jib right. us. Format the cards. Get the motion going. So, and they make much smaller jibs too. I'm oh, they sure got more jibs. Affordable. Oh wait, that is a <laughs> portable jib. <laughs> <laughs> What's but, I'm sure they're smaller. What was that one versions? on Kickstarter? That was the. Uh, oh yeah, that I, one. I talked to that guy. That was like 600 bucks. That's pretty inexpensive. That, inexpensive. That like folded up into the size of like a monopod. Yeah, that it would did. Be but great. I would be very careful with what I put on the end of that thing. Well, and I'm sure you probably can't get nearly as high as something like this. I don't know. No, oh, not at all. Hing gets really high with this thing. And, and the <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, the support for the other one, I'm sure, is probably only like you know five pounds or something like that. Yeah, it's basically. Really, so, what, how much weight can this thing hold? 
80 pounds. Wow. You could put a little small person on the end you of could, that. You could put a little person on the edge <laughs> and use them as the camera operator. That's true. Okay. Right. So the sticks themselves support 200. So Do you know how much the jib itself weighs? Uh, the jib itself weighs 27 pounds. And Not bad. Wow. All right. Well, so I guess we might as well just have Hing roll around for the rest of the show <laughs> because, well, we've got we've got um, how much we got Wheel of Fro coming up, Stephen. Do you have to change any cameras or are we ready to go? We're ready to go. All right. So we've got Wheel of Fro. So, Hing, you mind doing that? Uh, this is going to mess up his angle, though, with Wheel of Fro, probably. No, it's all good. Yeah. Yo, come on, Stephen. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Wheel of Fro time. Wheel of Fro. Wheel of Fro. Because <laughs> we are an hour in. We should have like a Vanna White come in here and just be like, you mean, wheel fro. well, we could, we could always ask what's her name to come in. Uh, Maria. Maria. Yeah. You could do that. Nice little no! ga gown dress. No! <laughs> Everything good. Look good. Cool. All right. So, uh, here's the wheel of fro as we've had for many weeks before. I'm not going to tell you who is playing just yet. Uh, so that keeps you guys in suspense to see who it is. We've got the Fro video guides. You can get both of them. We've got Adorama picks to get their books or prints made. We've got Lexar for the hub, which Hing is literally buying three of today. Oh, wow. Right? Yep. Hing's, did you order it while you were in here? I already did. Did oh, you wow. use my account or did you use yours? <laughs> <laughs> Forgot to log out. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Squarespace, which you know you can go to squarespace.com slash fro. Use code RAWTALK to get 10% off your first order. Borrow Lenses is giving, I believe it's $250 in credit, which is what the last guy got. Uh, I believe last time we spun it, he got that. Adorama Picks again. Fro Guide, Rode Microphone. We got Think Tank Photo. Don't forget that you can check out Rode stuff. Go like them on Facebook because I know they've got that competition coming up where you can win $50,000 in gear. Hing should actually enter to win that or try to win it. You never know. That could work out well. And now it's time to spin the Wheel of Fro. And don't forget that there's a question mark. We still haven't landed on that just yet. We Wheel ready? Wheel of Fro. Oh, I didn't say who's spinning yet. But I'm you, not going to tell you just uh, yet. I was going to say you're going to keep that a secret. There's a massive spin. Round and round it goes. Where will it stop? Nobody knows, but maybe on a Fro Nose Photos logo without a yes. And where's it going to stop? It's coming to a stop on question mark, question mark, Fro Guide. All right, so this person's going to win a Fro Guide, and I'm going to spin again. <laughs> you know what you should do for next week? Put like a, a video guide one on so when it comes out, you can give it to someone. That's a good idea, Steven Sutter. Thank you for adding that. Where's it going to stop again? Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Adorama Picks. That's Adorama Picks. Congratulations to... Are we ready? Connor Taylor. Congratulations. You have won some credit to Adorama Picks for either a photo book or for... What are you doing, Sutter? Where are you going? Pull the nice glasses. You know who you look like? He looks like Kevin Costner in um, oh, JFK. JFK. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does, here, he does. Look, get a close-up angle right here. Right here. Look at this camera. <laughs> Lean down. Oh, look yours. at this, my camera. It's, it's Kevin Costner, everybody. <laughs> Kevin Sutter Costner. The magic bullet. The magic bullet theory. All right. So, Stephen, how much time's left on our cameras? Can you stop walking in front of my angle? <laughs> Please tell me we're going to walk with this jib. Oh, here. you're right. I apologize, Stephen. <laughs> how much time's minutes. on all the cameras? Eight minutes, six minutes on this guy. All right, good. So we're good. Um, we are not flying solo this week. There's really... Don't want to overkill that. We'll add. We'll pick that up another time. We're working on doing some more interviews. We may have somebody in tomorrow. I'm not going to say who it is, just in case he doesn't end up actually coming in. <laughs> we've <laughs> changed this out. Changed out multiple <laughs> dates. Um, we've got some interesting interviews coming up. At least trying to come up. We've got that set and yeah. So don't forget to go to fronosphoto.com/slash. DSLR hyphen video hyphen guide. Make sure they add the hyphens. Yeah, add the hyphens. We'll we'll have the direct link over there on the site so that you guys can go sign up to be on that list to be the first to do, to be notified of new stuff that rolls out about the flat uh, DSLR guide. 
and also possibly be the first people to get it. I may release it earlier to them than anybody else and to be one of the people to do a review that could be for you and not for anybody else. Uh, thank you for all the photo news. You're welcome. Hing, thank you for sticking around to do that. Yeah, <laughs> I love you, baby. <laughs> you, uh, Hing, Hing lo- I'm not even going to go into that. We'll have more behind the scenes of of of, uh, of the video guide with Hing at another point, hopefully. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that part. Yeah, <laughs> that was funny. And yeah, we'll just do that. I want to thank alanscamera.com. Give them a check out, alanscamera.com. I want to thank Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com slash fro. Thank you to Atomos for the Atomoses that we use on the shows. You guys can check them out. Go like their page as well on Facebook. Uh, thank you to Rode Microphone. Continuing to use these Rode mics. I can't see us not using these. Especially the other ones when we go and do other interviews. We'll probably wear the the other la- uh, headphone ones because they sounded pretty damn good oh, when yeah. we were in Vegas. Sutter, thank you very much for your help. Anytime. Eckert, thank you. You're <clears> welcome. And that is going to be the end of Raw Talk episode number 74. Until the next time, Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. <laughs>